Hello, I'm Chris Beast here. In today's video, we will be reviewing what was covered for this week's dev stream, DevStream 54. For this dev stream, Pyrate was joined by Jonas Priestek, an analyst from the, you know, known kind of for his very interesting Priestek chart, and Barbara Kazakovic, I hope I pronounced your last name right, who is a QA tester. This dev stream was mainly focused on answering questions, but it had no real major announcements. So let's get right into it. First things first, Priestek, like always, gave us some really valuable statistics. Starting off, he updated us that the new longest snipe in the game was from an SVD, and it was 763 meters, which is bad. That is basically the entirety of a map, um, and it's mad impressive, so I figured I'd bring it up. He continued with a more relevant stat, for, however, which is 1,168,000 people died of snowballs in the ELIM last season. With this number, we can actually do some other stat, which is the number of elimination encounters with snowballs in them. So snowballs, the last encounter, are practically set to be guaranteed to appear once every elim encounter. With the elimination being 5v5, at most 9 people can die of snowballs each round. So dividing the total number of deaths by 9, we get the number of total rounds of elim in Season 10's mat, like minimum. Um, and that's 129,777. Considering last season was around 77 days based off what Priestech said, that means there were a total of 1,685 ELIM matches a day. That means 70 every hour and more than one round every minute. It shows that ELIM at the very least has a pretty large player count. This is data that is consistent with the Bohemia official release of player counts that showed vigor above day Z. So really overall, vigor is gaining more players at the moment. Um, it was also revealed sometimes later that Barbara played Freya in the live-action trailer and Priestek played the random Viking dude. Um, his comment on it was that it was a cold day and Barbara was very happy and optimistic about the whole event. Um, the next information we received was that the devs intend within the next week to release a roadmap of their plans for future content. This is huge news because people have been asking for a roadmap for a very long time, and I'm really excited to finally get our hands on one so we have an idea of what's coming. Um, following this, they commented that the challenge overhaul that they started two seasons ago is still something they're working on, and that they're going to be continuing to change this moving into the forward as it slowly refines itself into its, um, you know, a perfected state. Which is another thing to look forward to. I've been really curious to see what the final form of challenges will look like, whether that be quests or just challenges that are actually worth our time. Finally, one of the last things they mentioned was the February sale bug, where the pop-up for the February sale was popping up way too often than it should have. The bug was fixed in a hot fix that went slightly out, like a little bit after the dev stream ended. Um, so that is good news to hear that the bug is fixed for all of us who are suffering from it. The majority of this dev stream is spent answering QA questions, and a lot of the QA questions are, again, stuff that's been asked before in the past. Uh, just kind of, as most dev streams tend to be, a lot of it is carryover stuff from previous dev streams. So for those of us who are very up-to-date with the dev streams, they all kind of seem to blend together. Now, that is not a really a criticism. I think the devs did really good, despite the lack of any major announcements. Um, and learning that we're getting a roadmap in the future and pre tax numbers on Season 10 are both interesting things in my eyes, um, despite the devs really not having much to talk about. Um, but that is all I've got for you guys today, and that is all that was really covered in the dev stream. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you all next time. <laughs>